everybody doing today? Back again with another video for you guys and gals. And today what I have for everyone is my full review of the cameras on the Google Pixel XL. But before we jump into the photo and the video samples, I thought it was only cool. It would <laughs> only cool. I thought it would be really cool if we took some time to just walk through the camera interface, how you launch the camera, and all of those things. This way you guys and gals get a full grasp on everything that this camera is capable of and you know just exactly where everything is. So, starting off here, the first thing that you need to know when you want to launch your camera here is that there is a launching camera shortcut. Now, to turn it on, if it's not turned on out the box, what you need to do is navigate to your settings, navigate to the system settings, and navigate to the gestures, okay? And right here, you're looking for this right here, which says jump to camera. You click, click on that setting, and you can see it walks you through what you have to do to launch the camera or take advantage of that gesture. And this launching camera feature works from any screen on your device. So whether the display is off, whether the display is on, you can quickly just double tap the power button to launch you into your camera. Alright, so that's the first thing that I wanted to go over. Next now, let's dive in and look a little bit closer at the main features on the main camera app. So clicking on the Google camera icon. Now, those of you who have gotten the device and see that it doesn't look the same as what you had before, the only reason why mine look a little different is because out of the box I did do a software update and it changed the main camera icon. So that's my minds may look a little bit different than you guys's. And or if you see these extra camera apps here, these are just camera apps that I sideloaded for different reasons. Some of which we're gonna talk about during this video. But tapping on the main star of the show here, the Google Pixel camera app, you can see we're greeted with the main camera landing page. Now, Across the top, from left to right, we got a few different features and functionality that we could take advantage here. So in the, that we could take advantage of, my mistake, can't talk today. Now, in the far upper left hand corner, you can see we have timer controls. So we got, in terms of timer settings, we got three second timer, we got a 10 second timer, or you could turn the timer off. Now, timer controls are only, uh, can only be used during photos. You can't use the timer controls during videos, as y'all will see as we move through this. Next to the timer controls, we have our HDR controls. So we got, you could turn it off, you could leave it on auto, or you could just leave it permanently on. Now me, myself, because I don't like to tinker around with too many settings, I just tend to leave it on auto. But there it is there. So that's the HDR controls. Then we have our scene controls. Again, this is just something that I tend to leave on auto. Me, myself, I'm more concerned about capturing that moment with a picture or being able to take that video than I am about needing to jump through settings and tweak settings. So as you guys and gals will see, a lot of this stuff will be set to auto throughout this video. But in terms of scene modes, y'all can see we pretty much got our standard scene modes here. So cloudy, sunny, fluorescent, so on and so forth. That's pretty much all we have there. Again, we'll just leave that on auto. And then in the upper far right, we have our flash controls. Now, this is something that I generally keep turned off unless I need it. So you can see it's turned off here, but we got off, auto, and on. I tend to keep mine turned off. All right. I find that it tends to mess up a picture because a lot of the times I forget to either turn it off or it's on and I didn't realize it. So my picture tends to be messed up. So I tend to turn it off. Now, across the bottom here, we got some shortcuts to jump into different features of the camera. So you can see on the far left here, we have lens blur which is the traditional version that Google chose to implement for portrait mode. And pretty much what this is, as I demonstrate here for you guys, is with lens blur on, let me pick the camera up real quick. What you have to do is you focus on your subject here 
and then you tap the button and it's going to walk you through how to capture that image. And you see, this is why I don't like it because nine times out of ten, I tend to mess this up. Let's try again. Mess it up again. Probably going too slow. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons why I sideloaded those other two apps because it gives me the more modern portrait mode where I don't have to do as much. I just turn on the camera, put it into a portrait mode, and I snap away to my heart's content. So, not really happy that Google chose to do that. If they were going to give me a camera update, they could have did one more camera update and just put the traditional or modern portrait mode there. But moving on, if we swipe again more to the left, we got our panorama mode here. And pretty much this is self-explanatory. This just allows you to take one big picture and it will stitch everything all together in post. And you will have a giant picture with lots of details, again, if you do it right, okay? Then, swiping more to the left, this brings us back to the main camera landing page, all right? Keep going. This brings us into the video settings here. And as you guys and gals can see, across the top on the video settings, we got our frame rate controls in the far left. So you can see we can record in 1080p 30 or 1080p 60. Okay, that's frames per second. And or we can change the different scenes here. Again, I just leave this in auto. And then we have flash controls. So no timer controls here. It is what it is. Okay. Now we're going to get into the more settings option in a second here. Moving down. In the bottom left, we have a quick shortcut to take us to our front facing camera. So you just tap this and take you to the front. How you doing, guys? Tap it again, take you back to the back. Then we got our shutter button, which changes to our video button depending on what mode we're in. And then we got a quick shortcut to our gallery in the bottom left. Okay, now moving on to the more settings here. If we tap this, I was happy to see that with that camera update, Google did go ahead and port down Night Sight. So we got that Night Sight. So if you're shooting in uh, scenes with lower light, you want to turn that on. And it would really dial up the exposure and give you a nice, colorful scene. And I've actually seen it. I've used it. It works pretty well. Then we have Photospear, which gives you like a 3D globe image. Of whatever you're trying to capture then we have our slow motion controls and right here when you tap on slow motion you can see we got four times and if we tap it again we got eight times and what this is four times is 720p at 120 frames per second and then eight times is 720p at 240 frames per second so that's what that is there and then if we jump back and go into more settings here, we got our lens settings. And pretty much what this does is it lets the camera try and take advantage of what it sees on the screen here. So you can use this to try and capture text, try to pull up relevant images. As you can see, I tapped on my little light here. And you see it kind of thought that I was trying to see what type of desk I was talking about or how to install laminate on your desk or floors. So you can see sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so that's that. And if I go up here, see if we can get it to get the text. And hold it right here and we tap on this. See what it gets this time. So it pulled up different sayings here. So you can see, it's not perfect, but it, it does what you need it to do. Now, you can also scan the text of a scene, scan for particular items. It, recommend, it recognizes people, plants, or animals, and it also recognizes book labels, and you can scan barcodes as well. So if you want to like scan the text, see how, we, see how good it's going to scan the text here. Let me see. Tap on that. There it is. It pulled up the image again, so it didn't scan the text too well. But it is what it is. That's how you use the Google Lens. All right? Let me put this back down, and let's keep it moving. All right, now, 
So let's dive a little bit deeper into these settings here. So click on the settings gear icon, and this is the main settings page for your camera app. So you can see under general controls here, we can control uh, what the camera reports. So we can control, we can turn on and off, whether it keeps the location metadata, we could turn on or off the camera shutter sound, we could turn on or off the Google Lens suggestions. Now, if I was to turn this on, um, depending on what it sees on the screen, it would give me suggestions for via the Google Lens. Now, I'm not a big fan of that, so I leave, I leave it turned off. I use the Google Lens features if I need to. Other than that, we got gesture controls here. So if we go under the volume control shortcut here, we can use the volume keys to snap a photo, control the zoom, or control the volume for the overall video, or turn it off. I'm a big fan of using it to control the zoom, so that's what I have it set to. And now under the double tap gesture here, you can see we can double tap to switch between the front and the rear facing cameras, or we can double tap to zoom. So let me just demo that real quickly for you guys here. So I have it set to zoom. Let's go back to the main landing page. And if I double tap, it's gonna zoom in, double tap again, it's gonna zoom back out. And I believe you can preset this. So if I want to zoom into there, let me see what happens. Zoom out, zoom in. So you can preset the zoom that you want and then have it jump to it via the double tap gesture. So almost max zoom, regular zoom, double tap, almost max zoom. There you go. And you could do the same thing for flipping between your front and your rear facing cameras. So let me just go back to gestures again, go into the double tap gesture, and this is what I use it for, switching between the front and the rear facing cameras. So you can see right now it's on the rear, and if I double tap here, it takes us to the front. What's up everybody? Double tap again, takes us back to the rear. All right, so that's how that works. Quick little demo for you guys and gals. Now moving on, below that we got our grid layout controls here. So you can see you have the three by three or the four by four or the golden ratio. And what that is, is that just gives you your little cutout guidelines when you're in the camera app here. And I'm a big fan of three by three. So that's what I have it set to. But you play around with that and you use what you feel works best for you. Now, next, we have the advanced settings here. And this is where you could turn on or off the dirty lens warning. Or you can take advantage of the RAW and JPEG control uh, right here. And you can view the folder that the RAW photos and JPEGs go into. Okay? All right. So, that's the advanced. And if we keep going... Now you get to see the true resolutions and true recording capabilities of your front and rear facing cameras. So starting off with photos here, if I tap here, you can see the uh, rear facing camera on the Google Pixel or Google Pixel XL maxes out at 12.3 megapixels. But if you want to take full advantage of all 12.3 megapixels, you're stuck shooting in that 4x3 aspect ratio, which kind of gives you that letterboxing effect. Now, if you want to go with a more cinematic or widescreen or standard effect here, you want to use the 16x9. That kind of crops in the image a little bit more, but you don't have that letterboxing there. But you can see, if you use the 16x9, you're bumping the megapixels down to 8.3 megapixels. So you do take a little bit of a resolution loss there. But again, you got to play with it and feel, um, get a feel for it and use what you feel is best. Alright? And the same thing with the front-facing camera. So to take advantage of all 8 megapixels on the front-facing camera, again, you're going to be shooting in that 4x3 letterbox ratio. If you want to use the 16x9, you're going to have to bump it down to 4.1 megapixels. Okay? So that's that. Now jumping on to the video recording resolutions, you can see with the rear here, we do have the ability to take 4K videos at 30 frames per second. We could do 1080p uh, 30 and 1080p 60, okay? And we could do 720p 30, all right? Now if we jump to 
the front facing camera we could do uh, 1080p 30 and 720p 30 or 480p 30 okay and then lastly down here we do have EIS or electronic video stabilization which you can turn on or off using this toggle here so that's that and if you're having an issue with the cameras you can click on the help icon here and search for whatever issue you're having or if you just want to quickly send some feedback you can click the send feedback icon here and send some feedback directly to Google so that pretty much goes over all of the uh, camera interface and all of the camera settings now I'm gonna go ahead and insert some photo samples and insert some video samples
All right, how's everybody doing today? Back again with another video for you guys and gals. And today we're doing a front facing camera test of the eight megapixel front facing camera on the Google Pixel XL. This first test is being done in 720p at 30 frames a second. And there is no external microphone hooked up. So all of the audio you guys and gals are hearing is all coming from the microphones on the Google Pixel XL itself. And this first camera test is in the main shooting area. So as you can see, now when I record, I don't like to use artificial lighting because the artificial lighting that I has, that I have, that I has, that's not correct, that I have is pretty bad. So as a result, I tried to refrain from using it so when I shoot my videos, I try to wait for the best time of day to where I can get the most natural sunlight, all right? That way, everything is perfectly lit. As you can see, I have my shades open behind me because I want to bring in as much sunlight as possible, all right? So that's what this first test is, front-facing camera sample with the 8 megapixel sensor. How do you guys feel the camera is doing? How's the lighting? How's it doing with my skin tone? Let me know down below in the comments and I will see you guys and gals in the next clip. Have a good one. All right, shake your can. And this is just for reference. So th this is what good lighting, how my recording setup would look. I just figured I'd spin the camera around and show you guys real quick. So typically, when I'm doing the review, my uh, bullet points are over there. And you guys know, I don't have any specific bullet, po bullet points. I just have a list of certain categories that I wanna go over for each product that I review. And I usually have one of my smartphones set up over there with those bullet points. And then I use one of these three uh, smartphone holders and I do my review, all right? So that this is the lighting and you can see it's actually really, really good here. And if I bring something into the frame, got my S8 here. So we bring this into the frame, put that down. And y'all can see it's actually nicely lit. And if I turn this on, all right, super secret pattern here. Oops. All right, look at that. That actually looks pretty good. So now all I have to do now is adjust the brightness on the device and now I can record my video. So this is why I use natural lighting. Anyways, I just wanted to give y'all a quick sample of what it actually looks like because I'm just gonna clip this on to the front facing camera test. All right, have a good one. Okay, and we are back in now, and this is shooting space number two, so we're in the bedroom now, and if y'all don't know, this is actually where I recorded the v B Bing USB Type-C adapter review, and if I turn this way, you can see my TV over there, right? Now, it's not the best lighting in here, so you see but it's, it's the one light source back there. And then I have my lamps. And if I tilt up, I got the big light there. But as I said before in my other camera test, I don't like to use the lamps because the lamps are kind of old. They kind of give everything an orange hue. So I would actually prefer to use natural lighting. I apologize for the mess, guys. It is what it is. But yeah, <clears throat> so this is shooting space number two. This is camera test number two. Again, we're testing out the front facing eight megapixel camera on the Samsung, uh, not Samsung, I'm tripping, on the Google Pixel XL. All right, this video is also being recorded in 720p at 30 frames per second. Now in particular with the uh, Google Pixel devices, they can only do, uh, 480p 30 
720p 30, 1080p 30, 1080p 60, and 4K at 30 frames per second. And um, you know, I decided not to do the 480p, so we're just gonna do we're gonna test the 720p, the 1080p 30, and the 1080p 60, and the 4K. So this is your second 720p test here. All right. And this is shooting space number two. And again, there is no external mic hooked up on this one. So all the audio and video you guys and gals are seeing is being recorded using everything coming directly from the Google Pixel XL. All right. So let me know what you guys and gals think. All right. Catch y'all in the next clip. And again, this is just so you guys and gals have some reference. Alright, so I would actually open those shades all the way and flood the room with light. So I'd open up everything to flood the room with natural lighting. But you can see, depending on where I put the camera, it's actually well lit. Now I apologize for the mess. I forgot to pick my stocking caps up, excuse me. Take that out of here, y'all don't need to see that. So yeah, this is what it would look like in shooting space number two. Again, this is natural lighting. We just got the one light source there coming in from the window. All right, just for quick reference, and this is also in 720p. All right, sadly, my uh, my TV broke the other day, so I need to get another TV. Sorry, bruh. If you watch my videos, I apologize. <laughs> but yeah, um, I was doing some rearranging and I picked up the TV and it slipped out of my hands and hit me in the head. Then after that, um, it worked for a few hours and then it turned itself off and didn't come back on. So now I'm forced to edit all my videos from my smartphone again. But it is what it is. Anyway, real quick demo here just so I can see what I'm talking about. And I'll clip this on to the second 720p camera test. Now, let's go ahead and go outside and see what we can get with these Google Pixel cameras. So, I'll be right back. Alright, how's everybody doing today? Back again on another video test for you guys and gals. And today, what I have for everyone is a front-facing camera test of the 8 megapixel front-facing camera on the Google Pixel XL. Now, this particular video is going to be the last of the 720p tests. So I wanted to do one 720p 30 test outside in good lighting. And we're going to do a rear facing 720p test as well before we move on to the other camera test. So we're going to do 720p and we're going to do 1080p. We're going to do 1080p 60 and we're going to do 4K. All right. And just so y'all know, the front facing camera actually maxes out at 1080p 30. All right. All right. So let me know what y'all think of this front facing clip. How's the audio? Because there is no external microphone hooked up. How's the picture looking? How's the color representation looking? You know, how's the exposure looking? How's it sounded? Let me know down below in the comments. Now let's flip this bad boy around and test out the rear facing camera. Be right back. Peace. All right. And so now we're on the rear facing 12 megapixel camera on the Google Pixel XL. And again, this is being recorded in 720p at 30 frames per second. All right. Now the sun is getting ready to go down in about 10 minutes here. And I figured the weather is nice. So there's no better time to shoot. So we're going to run through the uh camera testing stuff that we do so we're going to do some pans we're going to do some focus tests we're going to do some exposure tests some zoom tests so on and so forth please feel free to let me know down below in the comments what you think of the overall video quality what you think of the overall audio quality so on and so forth so without further ado let's get this started so starting off we're going to pan here which is my far right we're going to pan from my far right all the way through to my far left. And back, we're going to do this three times. So that's one. This 
is number two. Okay. And this is number three. Now I'm trying to be as quiet as possible because I want to see how good the mics are picking up the surrounding ambient noise as well as how good they are at picking up my voice as well. And let me know what you think down below in the comments again. So this is number three. All right. Let's bring it back to the center. Okay. Now we're going to just test the exposure here. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is we're going to pan from one focal point to the other. And what we're looking for is a nice smooth transition from one focus point to the other with minimal exposure shifting and or blowout. So we're going to pan down from the floor here all the way up and out to the tree in the distance and we're going to see how the cameras handle exposure. So here we go. We're going to do this three times. Alright, that's one. This is two. And there's number three. So how do you think it did? It didn't look half bad to me. Now, we're going to check the focus here. So I got my three focus points. We got the tree in the distance. We got the moon up top there getting ready to come out. And we're going to use this pillar over here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to very smoothly and as quick as I can cycle between the three focus points and I forgot to mute my other phone, sorry. And I'm just going to report when the camera has a focus lock. So here we go, starting off with the pillar. Tap it to make sure it focuses up. Okay, so that's lock number one. Come over to the tree here. Lock number two is going kind of slow. And at the moon there, that's lock number three. All right, so we're going to do this one more time. Starting off with the moon, which is already locked on. Come down to the tree. Locked up. Come over to the pillar here. And, oh, that one was really slow. Locked it up. Okay, one more time. Back to the tree. Back to the moon there. All right, and back to the tree, and back to the pillar. Okay, not the fastest, but pretty good. How y'all think it did? And now, lastly, let's work on the zoom here. So, let's go, um, this is no zoom, which is what y'all have been seeing throughout this video. And... Now we're going to bang it up to two times zoom. All right, so this is two times zoom. What do y'all think of the color representation? Having some focusing issues there, it looks like. All right. Yeah. All right. And now let's bring it up to four times zoom. And I believe this is the max zoom that the camera supports here. And this is the main reason right here why I don't like to use the zoom from my camera here. As y'all can see, this is the maximum focal length. And at four times zoom, you do lose a lot of detail here. As you can see, the color representation is still good, but there's really no detail here. So as I always say, you really want to stick with this right here. Just two times zoom. This is as far as I would zoom in. Now if I still need to get close to a subject, I would physically move closer. Because look what happens when I physically move closer to this pillar here. Watch how much detail I get while still maintaining the zoom. So let's go closer to this bottom pillar. All right, check that out. Lots of detail there. I'm still getting the zoom. All right, so 
this was again a rear facing camera test of the 12 megapixel rear facing camera on the Google Pixel XL and this was at 720p at 30 frames a second so as always please feel free to let me know what you think and I will catch you guys and gals in the next clips have a good one everybody peace all right so this is another camera test this is testing out the front facing camera on the Google Pixel XL. This is the 8 megapixel front facing camera on the Google Pixel XL. And this is indoors with uh, um, adequate lighting. Now I don't like this adequate lighting here because as I said this is artificial and as you can see from the video it, gave, it gives everything a kind of orange hue. So when I record like this, if I'm okay with the orange hue, then I just release the video. If not, then I have to learn how to color grade the video so it looks right. But I don't know how to edit like that. So if you see any orange video or weirdly colored video, that's why it looks like that because I don't like to do that type of editing. But anyways, this is a real quick front facing camera test. Again, this is indoors with artificial lighting at 1080p and just so y'all can see what it would look like if i was uh reviewing something let me spin the camera around real quick all right so i'm back i spun the camera around and this is what it would look like if i was reviewing something right now now i don't usually record on this table i usually record on that table over there but i figured for video demonstration purposes why not so we got ourselves a nice plate of food getting ready to max this after I push stop but this is what the rear facing 12 megapixel camera looks like in artificial lighting as you can see there again I don't like this lighting but it is what it is and all of the audio you guys and gals hear from this camera sample test is coming from the Google Pixel XL microphones themselves all right all right, I'll catch y'all in the next clip. Peace. All right, and now we're outside by the pool. And this is a front-facing camera test. This one is being done in 1080p at 30 frames a second. All right. So we're not going to make this too long. Let me know what you think of the colors. Let me know what you think of the audio. How's, it, how's the camera doing with my skin tone? Is it blowing out anywhere? And again, all of this is without an external microphone hooked up, so everything you're seeing is coming straight from the Google Pixel XL itself and the onboard microphones. All right, okay. Now let's flip the camera around and do some rear-facing camera tests. All righty, now we're testing out the rear-facing 12 megapixel camera on the Google Pixel XL. And as I said, we're out by the pool today. So we're gonna run the camera through the usual testing. We're gonna do some pans. We're gonna do some focus tests. We're gonna do some exposure tests and we're going to wrap this video up. Now, this portion of the video may be a little bit longer than usual because I'm going to cut it and run some 1080p 60 video right alongside it or right after it so the first portion of this clip will be 1080p 30 and the second portion of this clip will be 1080p 60 because the rear facing camera on the google pixel xl does support 1080p 60 and 1080p 30 as well as well as recording in 4k at 30 frames a second so before we move to the other shooting area where we do the 4k we're going to do 1080p 30 here and 1080p 60 here. So starting off, we're going to do three pans from left to right. So we're going to start here, pan all the way through to the flowers there, using the flowers as our focal point, and pan all the way back to the pool warmer, using the pool warmer spout as our focal point. So that's one. And now let's go back to the flowers. That's two. Now let's go back to the spout. That's 
<laughs> three and one more time. I feel like I'm not counting properly, but last one. All right. And one thing that I want to point out is that the Google Pixel XL does come with EIS. I'm not entirely sure if it has OIS, but it does come with EIS. So let me know how the stabilization is doing. All right. Now we're just going to do some exposure testing here. So we're going to pan down to the pool deck and pan up and out to the balls in the pool. And what we're looking here for is a nice smooth transition from one focal area to another with minimal exposure blowout. So you can see now the pool deck is in focus and as we pan up and out to the water here, it shifts nicely to the balls in the pool. So this is nice and smooth. All right. Now let's do something a little harder. Let's pan up and out to the mango tree in the distance and see if we can notice any noticeable exposure changes. So now we're focused on the pool deck and we're focused on the mango tree. Again, not bad. One more time, actually two more times. So pool deck, mango tree. One more time, pool deck, mango tree. Now, let's do some zoom testing and then we're gonna clip, cut to 1080p 60. So let's use the blue ball there as a focal point. All right, so we're gonna lock focus on that. Looking good. Now let's zoom in. It's two times. Still looking very good. Got lots of detail there. Very good. Got some nice crisp focus. All right. Now let's take it up to four times. And four times is the max. Again, it's looking very good. Still got lots of detail. Taking up a lot of detail there. And I believe that's the max there. So let me try it again. Yeah, that's the max. So four times is the max. And again, I never recommend you use the max zoom on your smartphone camera because it is just digital zoom at the end of the day. So I always recommend you don't exceed two times zoom. So let's back up to two times. So this two times zoom right here. And then physically you want to get as close to your subject as possible. All right. All right, so that's the zoom testing right there. And one thing I forgot to do is the focus testing. So let's pick some focal points and let's run through the focus testing real quickly. So we're gonna use the pink ball as one focal point and we're gonna use the flowers as another. And real quickly what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back and forth between the two and I'm just going to report when the phone says it has a focus lock. Please let me know down below in the comments if you think the phone is actually in focus or not. So here we go. Lock. 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 Not bad. And one last time. Lock. A little bit of a struggle there. And lock. Okay. So, yeah. Now, I'll be right back. I'm going to cut in the 1080p 60. All right. So, we're back in now. And this time, we're recording a video camera sample test. Again, with the rear-facing 12-megapixel camera on the Google Pixel XL. And this time, we're recording in 1080p at 60 frames a second. So, let me know if you guys and gals can spot the differences because I'm going to cut the 1080p 30 and 1080p 60 so they play directly after each other. So let me know. Can y'all notice any noticeable clarity differences, any noticeable detail differences between 30 and 60 at 1080p? That being said, let's run through this test. So we're going to do some pans. We're going to do some focus tests. We're going to do some exposure tests. 
and we're going to wrap it all up with some zoom testing. So starting all off, we're going to pan from our right here all the way through to the uh, water warmer spout and we're going to use our plants as one focus point and the spout as another and we're going to pan back and forth three times. So here we go. And come back. So that's one. And come on back. So that's two. And come on back. So this is number three. All right. Now let's test the exposure. So we're going to pan down to the ground here. Make sure everything is in focus. Whoops. Finger in the frame. Sorry, y'all. And now we're going to test two exposure points. We're going to test the balls in the pool and the mango tree in the distance. And again, what we're looking for is a nice smooth transition from one focal point to the other with minimal exposure blowout. So here we go. Balls. Mango tree. Come back. Balls. Pool deck. Not bad. Actually, I think the actual pool deck color is right here. But when I get when I go down to get maximum focus on it, it actually blows it out a little bit. See, it's trying to make it white, but it's not white. It's actually a light brown, uh, light eggshell. So yeah, but not bad. So balls, mango tree. Let's try this faster. We're gonna make it a little faster. Pool deck, balls, mango tree, all right? One more time, pool deck, balls, mango tree. Not bad. You can see minimal shifting there. Now, let's, che let's test the focus. So we're gonna use the balls here, the mango tree, and the flowers and I'm just going to report when the camera says it has a focus lock again feel free to correct me down below in the comments if you feel like it was still not in focus so here we go locked on the balls locked on the mango trees locked on the plant not bad not bad go again balls Mango tree, ooh, a little slow there, plants. Here we go, one more time. Balls, mango tree, again, kind of slow, plants. All right, what do you think? What do you think? Let me know. Now let's test the zoom. So we're going to zoom it all the way in, but again, I don't recommend going past two times zoom. But starting off, let's move up to two times. One, two. And that actually looks pretty good. Pretty good indeed. Pretty good. Oh, uh, we got some, we got a little blurriness there. And it's not exactly picking up the most detail when you go far out. But as long as you stay nice and close, still get a lot of detail. Not bad, not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Now let's take it up to four times zoom, which is the maximum. So now we four times in. Yeah. Ugh. The graininess is even more apparent when you do 1080p 60. Look how grainy that is. And because we're zoomed all the way in, the slightest off tilt movement actually makes it look a little jittery to me. Let me see if I pick something close. Okay. 
So it's still grainy, even if I pick something close to focus on. Yeah, this is why I don't recommend you go with using the maximum zoom on your smart device. It's actually really grainy. Okay, let's zoom this back out. Let me stop hurting your eyes. Okay, so this was testing out the 12 megapixel rear facing camera on the Google Pixel XL at 1080p at 60 frames per second. Let me know what you think, and now let's cut to the 4K samples. I'll see you soon. All right, how's everybody doing today? And we are back today with the final recording test. This time we're testing out the rear-facing 12 megapixel camera on the Google Pixel XL. And we are doing this video today in 4K or 2K at 30 frames per second, okay? So, uh, 2660 by 1440p at 30 frames a second. So we're gonna run through the usual test here. We're out in the big yard today. We're gonna do some pans. We're gonna do some focus tests. We're gonna do some exposure tests. We're gonna do some zoom testing and we're gonna wrap it up. So starting off, I don't have a lot of space left so we gotta do this video as quick as possible. Starting off, let's do these pans. So we're gonna pan from here all the way through. To right about there and we're going to use this mid tree section here as a focus point and we're going to use this mid tree section here as a focus point so that was one and now let me go back to the beginning because I feel like left to right is easier so here we go with number two I'm going to do this three times All right, and bring it on back. And here we go with number three. All right, and bring it on back. All right, now we're gonna do some exposure testing. So we're gonna pan down to the ground here. Make sure everything's in focus. Then I'm gonna pan up and out to that big big tree in the distance there, right over the shed. And we're gonna test the exposure. Gonna do this three times. All right. That's one, go back to the ground. That's two. And one more time. That's three. All right, now let's check the zoom out. Then we'll wrap this video up. I'm trying to be as quiet as I can today so you guys can pick up as much surrounding audio as possible. This is where we get a real good test of the microphone. How's it picking up the surrounding noises? How's it picking up? my voice let me know what y'all think of the onboard microphone quality down below in the comments because there's no external microphone hooked up for any of these camera sample tests all right so let's start with the focus so let's go up to two times all right so this is two times zoom and i do have eis turned on today so let me know how the stabilization is that actually looks pretty good still. The grass looks good. We still got lots of details. The trees look good. We still got lots of details. The color representation looks really good. Can't argue with that. That sky looks beautiful. Nice blue color. Nice green on the trees and the plants here. Really good stuff. Really good stuff. Alright, and this was two times zoom. Alright, now let's max it out. I believe the max out is four times zoom, so let's do this. And that's four times zoom. 
And whoa boy, did it get shaky once I maxed out the zoom. So let's see. Colors still look good. The detail is a noticeable loss of detail and a noticeable downgrade in stabilization. Let's see, let's pan through some of these trees. Check out the grass. Yep, yep. The color is good, but the detail is almost gone. Like, I can't make out any of the edges of the leaves. Hmm. Alright, and this right here is why I never recommend you use the maximum zoom on your cameras. Let's zoom it back out. There you go. Alright, so this was the final camera sample test. I hope you guys and gals enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, as always, feel free to give your boy a thumbs up. That really does help me out. You don't know how much. And if you want to see more content like this, please don't forget to feel free to hit the subscribe button down below and click off the notification bell icon so you guys and gals get notified when I post new videos. That being said, I will catch you guys and gals in the next video and I hope everyone has a great day. And this is not the end for this phone because I will be doing some more testing I may even record a review or two with the cameras on the Google Pixel XL, so you guys and gals be on the lookout for that. And, as always, because this is the end of the full in-depth camera review, if you guys and gals have any questions about anything that I didn't cover throughout this video, please feel free to leave them down below in the comments. I do answer all questions in a timely fashion. Alright. Have a good day, everybody, and I will catch you guys and gals in my next video. Peace.